Welcome to the Call Spotlight, I'm Ralph Irvin, and this week we are here at the headquarters of Lampkin talking about the importance of grips and having good, usable, new grips on your clubs. And I'm joined by Bob Lampkin. Bob, thanks for joining me. Ralph, thanks for having me. You're already working on your grip, aren't I you? am, I am. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's what we know, it's what we do here. People don't realize how their club's grips deteriorate without ever being seen as deteriorating. That, that the club grip loses its really technical properties long before we would notice it to a visual eye or even to our feel. Well, I think for the most part, the, uh, the, the, the player hasn't uh, given the grip enough credit over the years as far as how it can help them actually play more consistently um, in their game, mm -hmm. and that would reflect on, again, the uh, replacing your grips to keep that freshness in the material and, uh, and grip sizing. Well, and you talk about grip sizing, I know that personally because with regular grips, my ball goes right. I mean, plain and simple, I can't keep the ball straight with an iron with a driver. I get to that oversized jumbo grip that my hands need, and immediately my game changes. And it's not something that necessarily anyone can say, oh yeah, I feel the difference. You just see the difference in play. Right. All, all, uh, all players are not created equal when it comes to their hands. And I often say that the, um, the grip is the only connection you have to the golf club. So if your grips aren't, are worn or slick, you're going to inherently increase your grip pressure. And increasing grip pressure tenses you up during the swing. So that's right. going to inhibit you when you're playing as well. You're not going to be able to increase your swing speeds or get to swing speeds or make your shoulder turn if your hands and arms and shoulders are all tensed up. So a fresh set of grips are going to allow you to lighten up on your hand pressure. The second aspect of that, if your grips are not sized properly right. and they're not married together as a unit, you're going to be fighting your hands in your golf swing, which again is going to cause a breakdown at some point in time during the stroke. And again, the longer you have your grips on the club, especially if you're in, say, humid conditions, they're going to lose tack and, and just not be as usable in terms of gripping the club. Sure, that, and that's all part of overall maintenance. Uh, grips, our grips will last a period of time depending on, on how much you play in practice and you can for a period of time you can take a washcloth, a soapy water solution or a light scrub brush and bring back the material tack if you will mm -hmm. but over a period of time UV and ozone are going to deteriorate the material and it would be time to replace them. And it just goes to show how important the grip is that it changes based on where you live how much you play, how much you practice, it would be easy to say, well, you know what, every 40 rounds change your grips. Mm -hmm. The fact is that in some climates, it can go longer, in some it can go a lot shorter. Well, that's a great point because we find in our aftermarket sales to our certain models are more regionally strong, if mm -hmm. you will, um, up in the northeast or in the southeast where it can humid in the summer. Right. Um, we have a tendency to sell more corded products in the southwest and on the west coast where the climate is more stable, uh, our rubber products have become more and more popular. So depending on the climate of where you're playing, the grip of choice, it, it, it can be impactful in that area. People are noticing when they, when they watch golf, more than just the regular swing grips, more, more than you know, the regular clubs, they're noticing a new trend and that is with oversized putter grips that a lot of professional uh, players are using. Is that merely a comfort aspect, or is there something more in play with having an oversized grip on a putter? Well, the, the, the oversized putter grip has come into vogue uh, primarily to take your hands and wrists out of the, out of the putting stroke. Okay. And it becomes more of a shoulder pendulum type stroke, which is much more consistent. And you have a new oversized putter grip design just to help uh, players sure. on, the, on the green. Sure. The, the, Ralph, the drawback to the oversized putters, it, it does functionally help you putt uh, okay. more consistently, but what happens is that with, with the majority of the oversized putters, they become very heavy. Okay. Because obviously if you're going to make the grip larger, it's going to have more material in there. Right. So the, the new oversized putter grip that we're going to launch this year on the 210 grip, it actually provides the oversized functionality okay. in the putter, but the weight of the grip is, is very, very close to a standard putter grip that the player might have on their grip right now, on their putter right now. Okay. And what that allows them to do is not change the swing weight or the dynamic or the feel 
of that putter even if they go to a larger grip because if you go to a larger grip that weighs more the weight is going to transfer from the head of the golf club back up into the grip and it's going to have a completely different feel so our oversized putter grip that we have now with the new 210 putter it allows the player to have the oversized putter but not sacrifice the feel or the dynamic of his existing putter. And it's just an example of, again, how little technical properties can make a big difference in your putting swing as well as your full golf swing. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important for people to go online and get at least an idea of the proper size of grip that they should get. And, and you're correct in that statement. And what the, what the players need to realize is to pay attention to any changes that they're, that they're considering with grips. Larger grips weigh more. It's going to affect the swing weight of the golf club. Um, it shouldn't be an afterthought. It should be mm -hmm. researched, and you can go on our website and, and really understand gram weight variance within standard size grips to mid size to, to truly oversized grips. And, and again, if you if you just start to feel any time, I've come to learn that if you ever feel a slippage, or if you ever start to see, you know what, I'm leaving the ball out and fading it a little bit more than I'd like, odds are that. It, either your grip itself is slipping or maybe the grip on the club is slipping. <laughs> right, right. And I, and I use that same analogy with the, with the tension in your hands. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you really feel that you can't lightly, very lightly grip your golf club and still have a secure grip, if you feel that you feel the tension in your forearms, it's probably time to re-grip your clubs if you can't achieve that light grip without slipping. Well, and if people, if people want more information on all of your new grips, they can just get it online at thinkinggrips.com. They can go to our website and they can find out anything they want to know about golf grips. All right, Bob, thanks for taking the time to join us. Thanks, Rob. I want to thank Bob Lampkin for joining us here in the Golf Spotlight. Join us next time as we continue to bring you the information that you need for your next golf purchase.